Oh man, what's going on guys? Look at this. This is unbelievable. I think this might be the biggest crowd of the year. This is definitely the biggest crowd of this year so far. <laughs> Especially when the lake's been flooding. <laughs> you can't really catch them, so you just got to talk about it. <laughs> well, as many of you guys, I know most of y'all follow what we all do on social media, be it Facebook or YouTube or whatever it may be, and we sure appreciate that. And uh, those of you that follow the, the stuff that I put out realize that we just released an app this week. Um, and it's a, it's a fishing spot oriented app designed to help you guys more efficiently with more detailed information than has ever been offered on any platform. I, I stand proudly behind it and, and didn't want to do it unless we accomplish this. And I feel firmly that while we're offering a limited number of lakes for now, it's going to keep expanding. We've got a few different ones now. We're going to keep expanding. But even though we offer a, a small amount of lakes right now, this is without a doubt, not even an argument, the best fishing information that you can possibly go purchase on any type of application out there. There's nothing else that compares to it. There's not, nowhere else are you going to have a guy that spends 250 days a year on the water constantly updating your information throughout the year telling you what's the best thing to do right now. You really do have a guide in your phone helping you fish. So how, many not, how many have not heard about the app? That's here. I'm fixing to walk through it. It's called Fish Life. So if you're looking for it, it's available on Android devices. And by the time this video airs, it should be available on iPhone as well. iPhone should be up tomorrow morning. I'll be posting a video with links as soon as the iPhone version is up. Um, and you can catch that on Facebook or YouTube. We'll put it everywhere. But it's called Fish Life with a Y. L-Y-F-E. Because somebody beat us to Fish Life the regular way. <laughs> but uh, So you'll open it up. And I'm already signed in, but you'll come to a deal right here. And it'll be a blank screen, and you'll have to go ahead and, and log in, create a, a user account. This costs nothing. Absolutely free to download, free to create your account. You'll be able to preview what accounts are available right here. As you can see right now, we just have three packages. We have East Texas Power Plant Lakes, which is the four Northeast Texas Power Plant Lakes, including Monticello, which is not really one, but kind of used to be one, but it's still a great lake. It's full of biggins. Of course we have the Goat Lake, our home lake, Lake Fork, and we also have a contributor from DFW that's doing a Ray Roberts package for us. We are going to have other anglers from other places come on board and contribute the same type of content I do on my home bodies of water, on their home bodies of water, and you have my word that we're not going to use anybody that doesn't deserve to be used. Like Everybody that contributes on this app will be making profitable money, tournament fishing, making their living fishing, guiding. They will be a profitable for a living fisherman if they're contributing to this app. So I'll, I'll put my word on that. If it's on here, it's the best info you can buy. Uh, once you do that, I'm automatically subscribed to all of them because it's kind of my thing. <laughs> but once you do that, you'll, you'll click one of these, okay? And it'll bring you to a zoomed out version of your map like this right here, right? Now at this point, for you to be able to zoom in, you'll have to go ahead and subscribe and pay for that package. Depending on how many spots there are, the prices will vary. Uh, the Ray Roberts package is $15 a month. It has 16 spots. We will never charge more than a dollar per spot. So once you've subscribed to it, you can zoom in. <coughs> and so you got spots like this right here. And I'll kind of walk this around the room. It's just waypoints. I, I'm fixing to click it again. Okay. It's just waypoints, guys. That's all it is. It just looks like map pins on a lake. But it'll also, if we were on Ray Roberts right now, you would see a blue dot where our boat location is as well. So your boat, if you're following the map, it shows you where you are yeah. in retrospect to on the map. Yeah, yeah. What lake am I on? So it's got GBS, so it's a GBS. Yes. Yeah, right once you look in, yeah. it shows you where you're at. That way you can just go right to the spots. You don't have to look at the map, put it in gear. You want to have a flip phone though. Hey, you're out of luck, Jack. So, now, once you... uh. Okay, so once you once you want to look at a spot, all you simply do is click that little red that little red icon, and this is actually I saw this was not Ray Roberts. This is one of our hot water lakes. This is Brandy Branch. Well, you guys know I'm on the water all the time. This is a perfect example of what we're talking about about keeping it the most current, best information. This was not on there three days ago when we launched that. This spot. I've been fishing out at Brandy Branch a little bit. These fish just all of a sudden started spawning. And so there's this cove in there that's just loaded with fish. Well, yesterday, 
live action, as soon as I found it, we added a spot that tells you this cove is full of spawning bass. You can catch them on a wacky worm, square bill crankbait, swim bait. Look for bedfish. Yesterday. I found it yesterday. Not last week, not last year. And it was on there last night. That's how current we're going to do all this. It's also going to come to the West Coast. We're, we're going to expand lakes. it. Yeah. It takes, you know, partnership building and all that, that takes time, but we are going to keep expanding this to other bodies of water. So for you guys out there in different areas, we're going to try and get it to you as fast as possible. Uh, but for all you guys local here, Lake Fork is going to have over 20 spots a month. Um, it have minimum of 20 spots per month that update, and when I find new stuff on Fork, it'll update then, just like that did. So, so you got a lot of different guys on different lakes doing the same thing for the Right now, yeah. Well, we're building that right now. Like, we've got other guys that are building packages that are on their way to us. Um, I can tell you, you can probably expect Lake Conroe. You can probably expect Lake Falcon. Um, there's some other ones I'm forgetting. Uh, Louisville's coming. Great Vaughn's coming. Sam um, So if I'm going, if I'm going to Lake yeah. Some lake tomorrow, I'll, then I can look on this. Side. You can look in there. Like yesterday or last week or something like that. It's going to be no more than a month old information. It'll never be more than a month old. Is it, it dated? It's not dated. It just always is evolving. It's like a living document type of situation where, you know, as a spot, we're also going to take stuff off. You know, like if we've got some main lake points on there, okay, it, at the end of summer on Lake Fork. Well, when they start pulling off the main lake points and migrating into creeks, we'll take the main lake points off and start putting creek channels in. Will it have a date on the icon or a date on the it does not have It does not have a date of when the spot was added or taken away. Basically, you can just open this app and know that you're when you look at these spots, these are good spots right now. Perfect. And we're going to work our freaking tails off to make sure that you got the right information all the time. Well, we're already working our tails off. We just have to incorporate <laughs> to give it... I know that's why I always eat so much so I can keep growing more tail to keep working it off. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, so you guys can kind of see, I mean, there's not anything else like that on the market from people that make their living doing this. So uh, we're really excited about that. And I didn't mean to go off on a whole tangent about it, but I did because I'm proud of it. It's my baby. And I've been keeping it secret for a long, like a year, over a year now, we've been working on this. And so. And I've testimony this man has truly, you know, I know there's a lot of men in here that know, and women, that know nothing's for free in life and you can work an eight hour day 40 hours a week, get somewhere. You can work 60 hour a week, you might get a little yeah. ahead. This is 2020, so you gotta be working 80, 90 hours. And I can tell you firsthand, this man's probably worked more like 120 hours a week. He's done his guide trips, he's gone home, no sleep. I've talked to him, <laughs> I've witnessed it. I've, I've I didn't sleep last night, actually. <laughs> in the morning saying I've been up all night, but I gotta pick you up, let's go film. And all day I've asked yeah. myself, what, what, what gets a man to do that drive? And, and we can so please you guys truly give it up for him he is oh, making a big no. change thank y'all and i want i want to say that i'm grateful yeah, for him being a friend and uh this is all awesome it's been a lot of work and we're really really proud of it and so. it ain't over i mean it's the, the work no <laughs> yeah we're kind of at the beginning more i'm glad you're doing it and what do you say to the one because i don't know you know your stuff what do you say to the ones that would say oh the spots are going to get over <laughs> Well, that's why, yeah, and that's why they, they update constantly. And here's the other part of it, too. Yeah, yeah. So let's say that everybody in this room downloads Lake Fork, right? Okay, if everybody in this room downloads Lake Fork and half of you try to go to Creek Bend 1, here's the good, the, the best part about this app. And the people that will get the most out of this app will use it as this. You go to Creek Bend 1. You look at it on the map. There's another boat fishing it. But you study it, you check it out, you see what I'm looking at on there, and now you can take that and duplicate it across the lake. You know that that's that pattern, type of spot, yes, you know yes. that if I find a creek bend that looks like this and I put a black and blue jig in it, they're biting it. Like, because that's what the app says. So now if I can find another creek bend that looks like this and put a black and blue jig in it, I'm gonna get bit. Like, my, my chances go way up of getting bit. There's no guarantees in fishing, but you know what I'm saying. That's perfect time to start talking about that. Speaking it? of that, creek bends, yeah, let's uh, if you have app questions, please hold on to them. Please remember them. I do want to answer any app questions that you have, but I do want to not drag the video out too long, and I want to, I want to get on topic for what we're talking about. And, you know, we talked about last uh, two weeks ago at the last seminar, I discussed how to fish that jig in that creek bend and how to work it through that thick cover and how to get those bites and all that stuff. So what I wanted to kind of show you guys today is, hey, we've got an app that's going to help you find some creek bends. For January, it'll help you find some more creek bends in February just by using the app. But what I really want to help you do is go to any body of water you want to, be it Ray Earl's Pond in the backyard, or be it Lake Fork or wherever you want to go, 
and be able to go out there, kind of locate the creek channel on your map with the little blue lines, but they're not exact. But you know what is exact? Side imaging. Side imaging is 100,000% show them how exact it spot is. Spot on. Yeah, okay. that's an airplane. No I don't think that's on Ford. Just went in on the, on the just he was looking at a spot on the app and got distracted. <laughs> now what I really wanted, folks, is I wanted to actually come up with an image besides a creek and a bunch of underwater junk, something that you would really commonly know what it is, so that you could yourself, anybody that has familiar with side scanning, it's been one of the toughest things to talk about and teach. I want you to understand, basically, it's kind of like you swimming down to the bottom and looking. It's an image from the side, just like it says. What is that, DC sound? Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what did Ronnie Kelly say when he was fishing with that crankbait? He knew it was, he knew it was a good year DC 22735E. <laughs> when he hit that tire with that crankbait, that's it. All right, so that being said, when you want to go find Creek Chunk, Creek Chunk, look. Me and Ronnie Kelly, actually, Ronnie Kelly left for Falcon today, so that's the only reason he's not here tonight, and he'll be gone for a couple months, fish, but, uh... Fish freaking wrecking machine. Uh, he, he catches all of them. I asked Ronnie today how many he caught, and he told me all of them. All of them. <laughs> that there, he's already caught all of them. Um, no, we were on Wells, boy, and he did put a clean <laughs> He's got them, he's got them dialed, that's for sure. Um, we're talking about this. Creek Channel bins are somewhat of a lost art. And, and Mike, you can back me up. I mean, we were talking, and you're talking about main lake points, main lake points, main lake points. And, and creek channel bins have kind of become a little bit of a lost art out here. And guys, I'm just going to tell you, over the years, I mean, when you're talking about cold water, there's been more double-digit class fish caught in a creek channel bin on black and blue jig than everything else combined. Combined. Put all the other stuff in a pile. That's done more damage. So... It's something that's kind of gone by the wayside a little bit. You know, it's definitely not honed in on as much as it used to be. The lakes evolved, but they will fish, predatory fish and bass will always look for the heaviest cover and the most exaggerated weird elevation changes. And there's nothing more sharp and drastic in these type of lowland reservoirs than a creek channel bend where the water washed out the edge of that creek and it has a straight bluff wall, sometimes six, eight feet, 10 feet tall, I mean, it'll just be shoom, boom, and roots hanging out over it, thick, heavy cut. I mean, there's nothing more dynamic in our lakes than these creek bends. What about the other side of the creek that makes what a main lake? The inside bend, it does make a little bit of a point, a sloping point, it does, so they can use that as well. But I'm getting off topic a little bit because I get all excited when I start talking about creek channel bends because I'm telling you, like, it, as I'm talking to you guys, I'm like feeling those roots in my head and I'm waiting for that jig to fall. Like, <laughs> that's what's going on. So I start getting excited and I get off topic. But so side imaging is your best way to find creek channel bends. So I'm going to kind of show you guys what a creek channel and the beginning of a bend looks like in this image that Mike found for us. Thank you, Mike. Um, hey, that's a real image. That's, that one right there is a real image and this is a real image. This is two, but it is staying on four. <laughs> yeah. So what I'll do is I go out and I look for the, I get around the creek channel and I just start zigzagging. Right? Especially I want to get around where I see on the map the creek channel is going to make some kind of a bend or a junction. Where this another is, this is always incorporated with your mapping. Yes. Your mapping will kind of give you an idea where your creeks your, are. Your mapping will get you close, but my creek bend may be out of, right outside the front door and the map has it here. So I have to do this. Now you'll be using your sonar and you'll see the drop when it drops down into the creek, it makes the U shape. And then if you look on your side imaging, you'll see something that looks a lot like this. And I'll pass this around here in a second. But what I'm gonna do is if you look right here, this creek is starting to make an outside bend up here, okay? Now, we don't have the whole bend on this image here, but we're pretty close. We got half a bend, right? Because this creek's going to keep turning this way, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna, I have a unique waypoint that I use to mark creek bends. And you can pick whatever waypoint you want. It can be, I've got a little blue diamond that has a little black wave through it. I just, the reason I use it is because I wasn't using that for anything else. So I use it to mark creek bends. And I'll actually start, you know, right out here where the bend starts. And I'll freeze my side imaging once I got the whole bend in my image. And I'll just go beep, 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 beep. Now, guess what I get to do? When it's time to fish that creek bend, it's really simple once you mark it on side imaging. Because all I do is I set my boat up. When I'm looking at my map, I've now got a horseshoe of waypoints on my graph. So I'll get on my front graph and I'll drive my boat. 
if that horseshoe sits like this, I'm going to park my boat right here where I can just fan cast to the left and right and all in front of me. And I'll park my boat right there and we got spot lock now. So I'll go beep and then I go like this and I creep it because we got to fish them real slow. That's how we fish those creek bends and just work my way around the entire bend. Okay, and that, that, what that does is that, that opens it up for me when the lake is low. I mean, when, lake, when the lake's full. Because when the lake's low, it's real easy. Like when the lake's low, it's so simple to fish creek bends. Because you see the trees that are lined up, the big old live oak trees lined up on that creek bend. They're the biggest you ones out there. And you can kind of follow the channel on those live oak trees. And on top of that, you can put your jig right beside that live oak tree because you can see it. Right now, you can't see it. So you got to do this. Like, it can still be done... It just takes a little more thorough work. The key is when you're in there too, and you've, you've, you've laid down those, say five, six, seven waypoints so that you have a reference by mapping, and you start what I call fan casting. Cast on, cast on, cast on, cast. Foot apart, and you're dissecting, you're, you're probing that bottom. When you find what you're looking for, which is obviously the bite, yeah. or the roots where the bite That's comes it, from. the real hard, firm roots, that's the deal. That's what you want to earmark and going to repeat that over and over yeah. and over again. So in a 25, 30 yard section, back. you're going to have two or three juice spots that you're going to discover, and that's what you're going to concentrate on, constantly having that bait in. And here's maybe the best part about this style of fishing and this time of year that we're doing it in. When you get a bite, when you're in a creek channel bin, and you throw at this particular angle, and you feel those roots, and then you get that bite, and you set the hook. You may not get bit again right there today, but I almost promise you, you will tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day, a and the next day. It's a home this time of year. It's a, they're traveling up and down these creek bends as they move with the weather, and they stop on these creek bends, and there's a reason he picked that root system. It's the most exposed, it's got the hardest bottom, Whatever the reason may be in his little pea-sized brain. And the other's with it, usually. The other, the other guy in there ain't got no bigger brain than he does, and he's going to the same tree tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't tell you how many times, especially when we can see the tops of trees, and Mike, you've seen this happen, but we can roll up to it. Like, I can roll up to a creek bend and go, throw to the left side of that tree right there. Tonk. I mean, it's automatic. Yeah, when you see the trees, it helps. There's one more thing we didn't talk about in this image. Anybody have any idea what we did not discuss real quick? What do you see on what do you see on that right there? Oh, what do you see? I'd say the long. What do you see in that? Hard bottom? Yes, sir. And and I'm looking at the wrong way. Yeah. And it's a real hard bottom and there's a, there's a tree. There's a tree hard there. Hard bottom and potential shell bed. Oh, shell bed. Okay, yeah. Okay. I Every mean one of them bends is gonna have the same thing too. It's gonna have some hard bend. That's why that steep wall didn't wash out. That creek came and washed in it. Usually in fork it's gonna be some kind of red clay. So it is harder content. Iron ore sometimes. It's a harder yeah. bottom and it also tends to have that current of some kind coming through it or around it. So you can see that highlighted part that I really want you to make sure you notice. That highlighted part, unlike up Yeah, there, that's a harder bottom. It's a much harder bottom and because it's so lit up, it's just shelving. It's shelving. Now, one other little clue that I wanted to touch on before, and I'm gonna let Mike really, Mike's gonna get really into side imaging and some of the some of the finer, finer things of that, which he's much more I, I'm real simple. Like, if I can kind of see what the tree looks like, I'm good. You know, I just run with it and start marking waypoints. I want to uh, fish in there. I want to yeah. There's five of them in there. We right. Go He's by. much more advanced at that stuff than I am. So, uh, but one of the big deals that you want to find, and I actually prefer to use my sonar to do this. We, yes. we didn't have a sonar image. I like to use my sonar <laughs> to do this. And, and it's going to be to locate bait within these creek bends. You're not especially in a deeper creek bend, one that bottoms out in 20 plus foot of water, 25, 30 foot of water, you're not going to see those fish. When you're in 25, 30 foot of water, they are so tight to those root systems, so tight to those, those walls of those creek bends. Yeah, it just looks like this jam up right here. You're not going to mark an individual fish in that creek bend. He's buried up in there. He kind of gets lost in the sauce there. But the, the way that I dissect which creek bends are good right now today and which ones aren't, is the bait presence. Okay, and there's two things that are going to help you with this. One is the way that I like to do everything, kind of like just hum and get in tune with nature, right? <laughs> when there's a loon diving in your creek bend, you're, you're on the juice. Just one, two, whatever. Two or three is fine too, but just even just one. If there is a loon diving in a creek bend, you're on the money. There's big shad there. There's a, lot, there's a mouthful of what he just said there. So do you go looking for creek bends or do you go looking for loons? 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> but the other way you can find it obviously is with your electronics. Now I prefer sonar because when I'm looking at bait on sonar, I can tell kind of the density. I, I'm just so used to looking at sonar. I've been looking at it for so long before we had a side and down imaging. I'm one of the last guys to get everything technology wise. You know what I mean? Like I'm that guy. I had the la I was the last one to get the smartphones and I was the last one to get the Ultra X and all that stuff. But the first one to get the app. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, hey, never mind. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> um, but when I like to look at sonar because to me, I've been reading it so I can see so much more. I can see that if there's individual arcs in there, I know it's either brim or gizzards. If it's, you know, real tight, dense, one green ball, I know that's thread fin. Like I can kind of tell exactly what type of bait I'm looking at. So I like to use sonar. But all you're going to do is everybody kind of knows what a bait ball looks like. Here's a bait ball on side imaging right here. Here's one on down imaging right here. We'll pass these around. You guys can kind of see those bait balls. But it, when you're idling that creek bend and marking your waypoints, you want to see bait presence. And you want to see a lot of bait presence. Because when it's cold, that bait should be condensing in mass numbers. They always do. If, it, if you don't see massive balls of bait, there ain't much there. So that's, that's the second thing you got to look for to, to really break down. In, I mean, this is like... We're giving you everything, like right here, like what I'm telling this stuff I'm telling you, like you know how to go out and do it just as good as I do, if you can soak all this in and put it into practice. And that's kind of the end of my, my deal on creek bins. I just want to show you guys how to kind of find them using side imaging in, in your electronics, because I don't know much about electronics, but what I do know, I know. I know plenty. <laughs> I bet you nobody noticed in this picture that the temperature was 21 degrees Celsius. I'll bet you nobody noticed in that picture that I ain't fishing there, Jack. That plane's under ice right there. How do they get that image through the ice? It just shoots through the ice? That's crazy. Um, all right, so, you know, Billy started this out talking about how you, you guys follow us and whatnot. We appreciate that so very much.